Hello, I'm Chris Dale, and I will show you Palo Alto's endpoint protection traps and how we can bypass one of their modules, the anti-malware protection module. So for this bypass, I have some malware I want to run. I'll use MSF Venom. Let's see, I'll create some malware using MSF Venom. We have a little payload, Windows Interpreter, which is fine. I'll echo this out to my web server and I'll try to download this file. And as any anti-malware protection module should do, it should protect me from running this malware, right? My interpreter is evil, we know that. So let's see what happens. Secure solutions that I know, perhaps. <clears throat> Things are slow. We have our executable, let's keep it, let's click it. We want to run it, it has not been code signed, not anything, and it refuses to run because traps has detected this as suspicious activity, perfect. Basically it said that it tried to execute it and it's not known inside Wildfire, which is Palo Alto's little cloud for re uh, reverse engineering and figuring out what an executable does. So this executable was not known inside Wildfire. And because of that, it won't run. Let's see, use exploit. Uh, I will set up a little Metasploit multi-handler listener. So when this malware is run, we will get a interpreter running, hopefully. So let's get the parameters running. Should be good. Pen testing, secure solutions that I know. So if this exec executable is ever run, I should have a reverse shell coming in. And right now we see that, look, something just happened. Our executable is actually been run somewhere not by me because I just got stopped, right? And I have a session opened. However, this session is actually quite interesting. It's from, actually it's from Wildfire. This John PC is the user inside Wildfire. So basically Wildfire just took my executable, ran it, and they're currently recording what is happening on this system. So for example, I'll do system info, and we can see that, look, I am definitely running with the user John. I know this is Wildfire because I've been in Wildfire a lot of times. We have some network card stuff going on. I believe we also, we could perhaps spot that we're running inside Wildfire or virtual, virtualized environment by looking at some of these parameters. Actually, before it said that we were running as Kimu. But never mind that now. We don't want to hack Wildfire. That's fine. Wildfire is designed to be hacked, so that's not that interesting. The interesting part was that, look, our executable just got prevented, okay? So I want to bypass that, and I will show you how to bypass that. The executable right now is on the system, traps.exe. It has not been removed. It has just been refused to execute. I just ran the type command, which will show you the outputs of any file. It will take it to standard output per default. But instead of putting the contents of the file to standard output, I could redirect my outputs into another file. For example, the desktop.ini file. So this would redirect the contents of traps.exe into desktop.ini. But instead of putting it into desktop.ino, I'll specify an alternating data stream. Basically, it's a stream inside of the file itself. I'll call my file video.exe. So this should type the contents of the executable, put it inside the favorites folder. And I will show you this file. And I'll show you that Oops, we can't see the file because it's alternating data stream. Let's see, let's remove all these things. Here is a file, it's one kilobytes in size. 
we can't see our executable. We can only see our executable using dir slash r. And we do a for slash r to show hidden files, run that against favorites. We can now see that, look, inside desktop dini is a video.exe, alternating data streams. Pretty cool. We have known about these for a very long time. So this is not something new. Most antivirus solutions will look inside alternating data streams. However, should traps protect us from creating a process that is inside alternating data streams? Yes, it should, but does it? Let's find out. So I'll do WMIC, it knows about alternating data streams. I'll do process call create, user profile, favorites, desktop.ini, video.exe. Our payload is running, executing. We see interpreter being run on the system with the following computer name, 62GV6. Let's do who am I? We are running on the system 62GV6. So just as simple as that, using alternating data streams, we have now bypassed the wildfire signature detection. And we have also bypassed any other type of whitelisting requirements, such as requirement for having the code signed. Alternated, alternating data streams simply bypasses that requirement. It's pretty cool. But this required a lot of manual user interaction, didn't it? That's not good. Really, we need to have some way to deliver our payload just having the user click once. So I have created a little script that does exactly that. I have a script, a PowerShell script, which I'll show you. It's in my Dropbox, in my hacks directory, nice. And this script, all it does is that it takes any file and whatever file I pointed to, it will base64 encode that file, create a new file having a lot of envir environment variables containing the file, the base64 file. It will output the contents of the file into a random name, and then it will do exactly the procedure I just did. Let me demonstrate. So I'll do PowerShell, Dropbox, Hacks, oops, Hacks, Traps. I'll run this file, I'll point it to this executable. So that means I need to download the executable, right? So let's download it. Let's save it. It's now in the downloads directory. Traps, oops, oops. traps.exe. Let's see what happens. Basically, it will just dump everything it does into standard outputs. But here is the contents of what we're trying to do. This is the base64 encoded file using environment variables, I'm storing the file in memory in environment variables. Then I just echo it out into a new file. I decode, base64 decode that file into the original executable. Then I type it, do WMIC, and I run it. So let's try to redirect this into a payload. For example, let's call it payload.bat. This would be your social, social engineering file. This would be the file that you want someone to click on. Move it into, for example, my Dropbox public folder, and let's access it from our host. So I should have this one right here. We called it payload.bat. So this is our fish, right? So this is the file that the user should click. Let's exit out our interpreter, run it again, and click the bat file, run it, and it's running. No prevention happening so far. I'm not exploiting anything, right? I'm just tricking a user to click a bat file, which he shouldn't. But still, we know our users. They will click our bat files, especially if we put it inside a password protected zip file. It will be something real, right? So again, we have a session opened, interpreter running, system for reveals, Yes, the computer name is actually 62GV6. We have again pwned this system using one click bat file. If we do it there on our favorites folder now, we should see that we have another executable inside the desktop.ini, basically fully compromising this system. 
So that's it guys, it's bypassing the anti-malware protection module on traps. We'll have this patched in no time, I'm sure. Currently running responsible disclosure. I'm not very worried about it. I'm just glad I got my hands on traps, testing it. It's a lovely product. I really enjoy working with Palo Alto and the traps engine. It's some really powerful stuff we got going here. The, especially the anti-exploit protection, really something we should look for in the future. And along with the whitelisting engine, it's quite, quite powerful, guys. So thank you very much. That was it. Bye-bye.